I think that so much of my work is about speaking about identity, about centering your truth and yourself. Um, but I think there's another piece of it that you can't run away from, which is your connective tissues and ties to people outside of yourself. I'm so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> this is only copy of Janet Mock's Book of Life. We created this just for you. Oh my God. When I first got the invitation from uh, Dr. Gates, I was overwhelmed with the sense of like, I have to tap into my family history. I have to have conversations with my parents about all these little legends and stories they may have heard, the oral tradition, the history. So when I sat down with the actual book, um, it was overwhelming to see this kind of start to, to unfold. Probably the first thing that I think I did was that I called my mother. I really just gave her like a data dump on our life. It was really interesting to have that conversation with her and to really help her, you know, find these little puzzle pieces of herself that, that she then got to learn from me being a part of this process. For a lot of African Americans, there's this whole history about our surnames. We know oftentimes we're scared of knowing where they come from, but I think there's a lot of peace and reconciliation that comes from being able to say that right here there's recorded proof of where your name came from. William T. Mock, description of slave, age 14, sex, male. So our genealogists believe that you are looking at the registry of your ancestor who was a piece of property with no name, enslaved by William T. Mock. Well, it's interesting to see where Mock came from. Mm -hmm. At the time, this was the name that he decided to take on. For me, there's a piece in knowing that he made that decision, and so I am really grateful for the fact that I at least have a record that shows me where that name that I carry every single day comes from. Probably the most surprising thing was that I was completely correct about my <laughs> fractions, I guess. Being half black, um, being you know part native Hawaiian, and being part white and Portuguese. Dr. Gates was telling me that it was actually really surprising that there was no mixing on my black side. And he said that it is so rare, and I, I hadn't known that. For a lot of folk who think that their whiteness in particular is something that is like this pure thing that oftentimes I think that what you learn specifically on the show is that we're a lot more connected and complicated than we think that we are. And so maybe then you challenge the ways in which your, say, political ideologies limit you. I think that what this process does, I think that not only does it connect you with your own family, but I think it kind of shows like this really grand kaleidoscope of identity. And so I think that what it challenges me specifically to do is realize that I am a part of something so much grander and bigger than myself and challenge the way in which I look at myself as, as an American. <laughs>